Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be making a simple distillation apparatus um, out of these steel parts. Now I do have a glass distillation apparatus which I bought online and it works very well for several applications. However, if you're using really high temperature applications then you may melt out your glass and it just won't work. This is demonstrated in um, Nile Red's video where he melts his glassware when he tries to make acetone from calcium acetate because he just gets it too hot and it ends up melting. So when I go ahead and make acetone from calcium acetate, I will be using this steel distillation apparatus which I am building because it will be able to handle the very high temperatures and will definitely not melt. Anyhow, so this is rather simple to do and it costs about $15 including all the steel parts um, from Home Depot. Now, you don't really need all of this, but I just went ahead and made it much bigger. So basically, this is a bunch of um, half-inch pipe here, and this reduces it, um, or sorry, three-quarter inch pipe, and this reduces it from three-quarters to half-inch, and then this piece reduces it from half-inch to uh, three-eighths of an inch. And then, this goes over, and this is our uh, condenser column, um, which a test tube could be applied onto here, and these are just two pieces and then there's your output. Test tube could go there, collect your distillate, or you could opt out to instead take a long piece of uh, tubing or something. This is uh, quite hard tubing, it doesn't bend or anything. And you could hook it into here and create a very long distillation column, um, which would condense your stuff. Um, much easier because it's much longer. And this is probably what I'll end up using for higher temperature applications. Anyhow, also, in the case of something like cesium or something, you don't need that big of a thing, so I also purchased a 3 8 inch end cap so we can have a smaller little um, capsule, uh, capsule here for distillation because I am planning on making some cesium um, through uh, a displacement reaction and then distillation of cesium. You could also probably do this with potassium and I have attempted this, however, I melted out my thing with Merrick furnace, so I will be creating a rig which will keep a very high temperature lower than the melting point of steel, which will still work for isolating potassium this way. Anyhow, besides all that, I'm going to go ahead and put this together to show you exactly how it looks. Okay, so it's all been put together, and you can see this is where your product will go before it, or our, your uh, thing, you, you will put um, your impure product here before you distill it at high temperatures. And then we'll travel down our condenser column over to this side where we can stick a test tube up into this piece of plastic um, which will act as a receiving file, uh, flask. You could also just stick this in the top of a uh, Erlenmeyer flask or something or any container and collect your liquid there. Only one more modification will be needed which is to drill a hole in the top to um, prevent pressure buildup in the case of you having a test tube here because that would be a sealed device and you'd get pressure buildup and break it at some point. Anyhow, so the next part we're going to work on is the heating supply. Now this is essentially going to be a refractory brick, which um, will drill out the center and drill a hole in the side. And this will allow us to put a propane torch in there and have it the heat all around our steel apparatus here. This will become very hot, plus uh, over probably just over a thousand degrees Celsius. And that high temperatures will keep this steel below its melting point, but at a high enough temperature to distill over and break down most compounds, including distilling over cesium and potassium. Um, and th this will allow it um, so that we don't have to just concentrate the flame in one area. Because then, all the rest of this apparatus is a place where your potassium or cesium could condense, and you will not get it going all the way up and over. So we must be able to heat the entire column evenly. So go ahead and prepare the next part. Okay, so this big... Um, uh, refractory brick I um, ad obtained from a place called Green Barn Pottery Supply. It's in Surrey, Vancouver if you live anywhere near there, and that's in Canada, British Columbia. Now this will be extremely um, useful um, because it's, it is very porous, so it does not conduct heat very well, and it has a fairly high melting point of 2,300 degrees Celsius, so a blowtorch will not be able to melt this. So we will be able to create a very hot chamber in here. Now this is only two inches tall as you can see, um, but it is clearly long enough that if we leave a bit of insulation room at the bottom, we should be able to nearly cover our entire um, pipe here, and the heat coming out of the top will warm up the rest of this. So to do this, it's going to be fairly simple. We're going to drill a hole for our uh, blowtorch, um, and depending on your size of blowtorch, of course you're going to have a different hole. And we should do it at an angle so that the uh, gas is spiraling around, evenly heating everything, um, 
and, and then it will come out the top. And through the top, we will have to drill a very long hole, which is uh, quite uh, fair, at, at least big enough to accept our largest part of our distillation column, or just, just distillation apparatus here, so that it will be able to slip all the way down inside, and there will still be room for the gas to circulate around and come out. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can find some drill bits which will do such a job. And I'll drill straight down until about this point and insert a hole. And I'll meet you back when that's been done. Okay, so I went ahead and modified the brick and it turned out that I needed a one and a half inch hole in the top. Um, which went right down until about here. Where I drilled a small hole which can be variable depending on the size of your blowtorch. And then this can just be inserted in so that it doesn't... Uh, it's just right at the very edge. Now... Um, this, your uh, distillation uh, part of it, like your, um, the flask to begin with down here, uh, should go in a fair distance, and it sits right at the bottom, it slides in and out nicely, uh, allowing a fair amount of room for air to travel by. Now, with this uh, d adapter here, another thing that I forgot to mention earlier, is that when hooked on, you can put a test tube here, and put this to a vacuum pump and this allows for the collection of cesium because cesium must be distilled under a vacuum and cannot be distilled in the air of course um, and then this rubber here just creates an airtight seal and holds your um, small test tube on now that could also vary depending on the size of the test tube that you use anyhow so let's go ahead and give it a quick run so we start by of course turning on our gas a bit take a light or something and simply do that now if we look down inside, you can see it's getting quite hot in there. And um, shouldn't be too, like, yeah, looks really nice down in there. It shouldn't be too difficult, but you just simply put that in there, and it will start to heat up. Now, of course, I'm not doing a distillation right now, so we'll just turn that off. Um, but yeah, that's basically the principle behind this working. And this will heat up the entire column, getting everything nice and hot. But although it will take a while to heat up because metal is such a good conductor. We can then attach on whatever other piece that we need and um, go ahead and distill whatever we want. So anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, I guess I'll see you in the future, hopefully using this distillation apparatus. Now remember, if you do, such as in the process of acetone, there's no way to monitor what temperature things are coming over because a glass thermometer in this heat would just melt. So you would distill everything over and then do a simple distillation with a glass apparatus where you can use a thermometer after you've collected your crude product. This is just for basic very crude distillations. Anyhow, so hope you enjoyed and see you later. Wait, bye.